Hey guys, it's Jill with Go English Coach. How is everybody today? I hope that you guys are doing well. Make sure you, when you're signing in, ooh, get a little less posy here. Um, that you say hi to me. Um, ooh, I got some, cr I got some crazy hair today. Um, uh, so yesterday we talked a little bit about. Make sure my phone is off here. Yesterday we talked a little bit about um, the things that I've got here on the board still from yesterday's live. Um, talked about making a, a, a goal and why I think that's really important because, um, I mean, most of you probably have a really great goal. Um, you know, a lot of the students that I've worked with, their goals were to um, immigrate to the United States or another part of the world that speaks English. Um, Another really common one was to be able to enter into a university or to get into um, a program to become uh, a certain kind of job, doctor, engineer, whatever. So I've worked with a lot of people who have had um, career, educational, travel kind of goals. Um, one of the things that people ask me a lot about are some of the things that you can do to get better at speaking or pronouncing or um, you know improve the accent uh, in their English. Hi guys, how are you? Um, and my my number one response is always practice, right? Um, you have to be able to practice with people. And in order to do that, efficiently, we need to be able to feel comfortable, right? Um, and so things that I recommend for having good pronunciation um, and fluency um, are to, number one, surround yourself with people who speak the language that you want to speak. I mean, that seems kind of like, you know, a no-brainer. Um, the next thing I would say is tell those people that you're hanging out with, like, hey, listen, please do me a favor. You guys can write this down. <laughs> do me a favor and um, tell me when I make a mistake, okay? Tell me when I've made a problem um, with my English. Um, so that's, I think, really, really important um, because I've heard so many stories. I have friends that I won't share those stories about, but so many friends have said things and I say, no, 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 that's not the right way to say that. We don't say that or we don't use those words together or, you know, because there's just lots of English has a ton of words. We've like, I think we have the largest vocabulary out of all of the languages. Um, and on that same note, having a large vocabulary means that you have to study the actual words, right? You have to study vocabulary. And the way that you can do that, that makes a lot of sense, um, in my opinion, are I want to share this book with you guys. So this is kind of more for like maybe beginner or lower intermediate, but... Um, Picture dictionaries are really, I'm going to share a couple of different books with you guys today. And I've done this before. I've done this video and shared some books with you guys before, but um, people have been asking, so I'm, I'm just, I'm sharing them again. So this is kind of an older version of this dictionary, but here's what I love about it. I love that you can learn the words in context, right? So here, for example, is like, words related to math, okay? Now, this particular book is in English and Spanish, so it will give you both um, languages. Hi, Fahim, this is a live session, yes. I'm not really teaching right now, but we're just kind of chatting. So, teaching um, sessions, the live sessions start next week, okay? Where we'll be, in those sessions, I'll be doing live lessons on um, pronunciation and the sound system of English. That's starting on April 6th. So actually, if you guys go englishcourse.com slash challenge, the challenge is starting next week, Fahim. Thank you so much for asking. 
Um, that's the challenge. Um, so best book, I, I don't get any money for this or anything like that. Um, but this picture dictionary, and there are a couple other ones and there is definitely a newer version. You can get it with, I think it's in most languages. You can get English, Arabic, you can get, um, English, Japanese, all kinds of different translations. Um, so in, so the, what I really like about the, the, the things being in context, right? In context. So meaning you're learning about like a subject versus, you know, going into something like, uh, just looking for one word in particular, you know, in something like this, you're looking at all of the words related to a particular subject. So for example, you know, if you were going to the doctor, this is kind of a timely thing to talk about. Um, if you were going to the doctor and you needed some help describing your symptoms, you know, I, doctor, I have a headache. Um, my, you know, I have a headache. My throat hurts. I have a cough. I feel congested. Um, my stomach hurts. All of these things, those are going to be kind of like in context, right? Does that make sense, you guys? Um, so that's what I really like about this. Um, I think something like this is really easy. You know, you're getting ready for bed at night, you're laying down, and you could just very easily study one particular subject. My fave. Um, other books that I think are just totally, totally necessary for learning. So the goal here... Can you tell me for learning vocabulary? Yeah, Fahim, actually that's, this is such a great, this is gonna give you like the essential, um, essential uh, vocabulary, essential vocabulary, like the basic foundational stuff, right? So like I pulled up the mathematics one again. Um, here's the one, look at that, going to the doctor, okay? Super, I, I think Fahim, if you can get something like this, um, and just study as much as possible. You know, maybe a good way to do this would be, okay, tomorrow I know I have to go to the bank, okay? So choose, you know, find the page in here that says I'm going to the bank and maybe choose five words that, um, that you didn't know before and try to utilize them in your interaction at the bank. You know, make kind of make like a little game out of it. I think that this is a great way to learn vocabulary. I mean, other things are like, this is a Spanish English, so a really, really long time, but I still use it, to be honest. I mean, I know there's all of these things on your phone and, and apps and stuff like that. All of that stuff is great, but I really like... Um, books, um, especially because, let me show you guys, um, if you get a really good um, dictionary, well, all dictionaries technically should have this, but maybe I can see if I can show you. Can you guys see, let's see if I can show you. Um, okay, look at that word summer up over here. So you see the word, ooh, I'm going backwards. You see the word summer at the top. And then these, ooh, 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 see, what do you see right next to it? What's that right there? It's the pronunciation, okay? So this, I think, is very, very, very important, especially for people learning English, because here is the problem with English. It is not a phonetic language, okay? English is not phonetic. What does that mean? It means because English has so many languages that it derived it, its words from, sometimes you're going to get the letter A in a word, and it's going to sound like A, ah, like apple. Sometimes you're going to get the letter A in a word, and it's going to sound like A, like stay or cake, okay? Sometimes it's going to sound like ah, which doesn't make any sense, right? So what you need to do is study those sounds, right? Those are the foundational pieces of the English language. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is in your native language, guess what? 
you never really needed to learn the language the sounds because it was natural to you your it's your mother tongue your mother your parents whoever raised you you were around those sounds all the time so you didn't need to study the sounds um however in english hi guys um in english what the children in American schools um, study a lot of is spelling. And the reason they do that is because, again, English is not phonetic. So they need to study that. Um, so here, for example, this was a lesson my son was doing today, okay? Literally today. So he was studying. Okay, so he had this consonant, vowel, consonant word mat when they add the e at the end it becomes mate and it goes from a which is this sound to a oops that is horrible right there okay e y is the sound right these are the pronunciations this is what my first grade son was practicing just today so this is just kind of one of those rules that the kids learn they learn that this E is silent, it produces no sound, but that it changes, the E here changes the sound here. So it goes from A to A, okay? So those are some of the things that I think are really important. Um, you have to learn the foundational sounds in a language if you want to speak it with clarity, with confidence, with, um, fluency right this is what we all want that vision that we talked about yesterday what does it feel like to be fluent what does it look like does it look like i'm going into the bank and i don't have a problem speaking to the teller they understand everything i'm saying that's my vision um i shared yesterday with you guys about um a vision that i had um well, what, I'll tell you one experience. When I was living in South America, I had to um, call to buy plane tickets, and I was terrified. Um, I, it, you know, speaking on the telephone in your second, third, or whatever language is terrifying. It's very difficult. You can't see their faces. You can't read their lips. You know, there's just this kind of, it's like you're blind trying to speak a language that you're still kind of learning. So I, I did it though, I called, I had to repeat myself a couple of times, but I got the plane tickets, gave my credit card, and I was so proud. <laughs> I was so proud of myself. But it really did take some practice. I had to look in my dictionary, you know, something like this. I had to look in there and get all of the words that I wanted to say. Okay, how do I say that? Okay, how do I use that verb? Okay, if I say it that way, does that mean it's in the future tense, right? So. Um, and then, you know, the goal for me after that, so the goal changes after that, the goal was, I want to do that without having to practice. I want it to feel natural, right? That's what we want. This kind of natural flow. So, um, that is what we're doing starting next week. We've got five, one, two, three, four, five, five days left until my English challenge begins. We will begin on April 6th. So just so you guys know, um, okay, Fahim, yes, I will send you that. Um, just so you guys know, the class begins on April 6th. So if you buy it now, which is, I want you to do that because I'm only gonna keep a small, I'm gonna keep this group small so that we can really, really focus on what you guys need. Um, so Fahim, if you're, if you're going to join my class and, I don't know what your, what is your native language, your first language? You should tell me, Fahim, if you have a minute. Um, in this program, I'm going to work with you um, in a small group setting, but also if you need help, we'll do some one-on-one -on -one stuff. Um, and we can kind of identify your specific needs. So um, if you know you need help pronouncing the ED endings in English, like th that's one of the lessons that we will do. So... Um, so small group, we're going to work in small groups. I'm not going to have a lot of people so that you guys can really get the attention that you need. Um, you're going to get access to the first lessons on April 6th, so next Monday. You'll have an, a login. 
Um, super easy. If you have questions, I'm right here to help you to get to get you logged in. Um, the lessons are specific to speaking pronunciation. Um, the, we begin with the sounds. So we, we look at all of these things, right? So sound, spelling, correlation in English. Um, Pashto. Oh, good. Awesome. I don't know much about that language. Um, thanks for sharing that. Um, so anyways, yeah, so we will be doing, um, you'll get, at, we'll start with the sounds. And then from there, we're going to move into, sorry, my kids are being loud have all these kids at home with me. Um, after the sounds, then we're going to start looking at word stress. So, um, you know, when you have words that have different stress patterns, we need to be able to predict those things. And then from word stress, then we'll go into sentence stress. So where in a sentence do we have um, stress patterns? Um, there is a way to predict how the stress falls in English. Um, and then we're going to look at um, rhythm and intonation. And so connecting all of those pieces together, right? How do you say, I mean, for example, a way of connecting words and thoughts is uh, by way of reduction, meaning we reduce some sounds. Um, so reduction is really important. Hi, Sla, how are you? Um, reduction is really important to sounding natural and to sound fluent and to sound um, confident and so that your language sounds really native, native sounding English. That's what we all want, natural, comfortable. So those are some of the things we're going to be working on. Um, like I said, you get each day, you get a new lesson. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're going to do this right here where I'm teaching a class to you guys um, and then we're working together to get you to your goal of fluent English. So um, I'm going to put this link in here again, go englishcourse.com slash challenge. If you guys have questions, the course, um, excuse me, the challenge is going to be, like I said, we're starting in six days. So I really want to get you signed up if you're going to go for it. Um, I'm here for you. Um, it's going to be great. And I can't wait to hear if you um, have, like I said, message me with questions. Um, and I can't wait. I can't wait to meet you guys. I will be coming on tomorrow again to do another little video because I have so look at all these books I wanted to share with you guys today. People always ask me about books. So we'll look at a couple more of these tomorrow. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about as far as the books, we talked about this picture dictionary and how much I liked that. Hi, you guys. Um, picture dictionaries, but also phrase books. And the, the greatest thing about Google is we can find anything, right? Do yourself a favor and um, search for the 500 most common words in English. Um, also search for here 500 most commonly used English words look that up okay this is your Google this is your homework for today okay 500 most commonly used English words and then I want you to also look up the hundred most common verbs in English okay that is what I want you guys to do um, I'm going to submit that for you guys there so you can you could even copy and paste that right out of there and just go um, Google those things. Um, those lists are going to be super, super important. Um, and it's really the basis to learning any language, right? If you talk to people who have learned or mastered multiple, multiple languages, there's definitely a strategy involved. And knowing the key core um, vocabulary um, and knowing the sound system, two key, key points, okay? So um, I'm gonna sign off for today. I've talked way too much, <laughs> but I can't wait to meet you guys in this challenge. We're starting Monday, so hurry up and sign up. Um, I'll talk to you guys manana tomorrow. Bye.